coffee representing for the CCM party. Hammer time again! Run to the board and vote for CCM! CCM ready and fit for the election! Only if it just heading in one direction! Five more years to keep up the momentum! All on board marching to the same drum! All around the island On the map, get ready, you will start Vote smart, run to the board and vote for CCM On the map, get ready, you will start Vote smart, run to the board and vote for CCM Ladies and gentlemen CCM people Nevis people, let me hear you make some noise. Well, it really, really feels like the campaign is on. Last night I was here and I promise you that tonight, tonight I will finally bring the grip that all of you are waiting for. So I have a man saying I'll bring it for me. And I'm asking the king, MBE, Keith Scarborough, to bring, slowly, slowly, slowly. You gotta roll it. He has to do it properly. Oh, slowly. He has to roll it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. King, King, don't leave yet. Don't leave yet. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. <laughs> he has to open the grip. He has to open it. I feel so privileged I'm being assisted by a king. King, this is the Hector file, not this one. King, you're not a very good assistant. This is the Patrice file, not this one. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> King, you have brought the right fight. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have made both say that this election is a contest. It is a contest between people. It is a contest between ideas. It is a contest of characters. And uh, certainly on Friday the 5th, you will have to make a decision. <coughs> it looked like the grip had in dust in it. So my throat is a little dry, but I will get to it. Now, I have said night after night, as we have campaigned, Someone please bring me some water if you have it. Night after night as we have campaigned. I have made the point that the Honorable Eric Evelyn in number 10. The Honorable Alexis Jeffers in number 11. And yours truly in number 9 that we can say in any place at any time, in any crowd, in any company that we find ourselves, that before God and man, our hands are clean. Thank you. <coughs> I assure you, it is not Corona. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our hands are clean. 
And when people come to you and people seek for you to put your trust in them, you must examine their record. I have come and I have said that as the Premier of Nevis, that if something goes right on this island, I certainly am in the limelight to take the credit. And equally, if something goes wrong, I am there to take the blame. The reason for that is simple. That when you are in a position of leadership, what happens under your watch, you must answer for. It's a simple concept. And if you're not prepared for that, then you're not prepared for leadership. Now we have come here night after night. We have spoken to the lack of achievements by the NRP in government. We have outlined that for 19 long years, they were at the table in Bastia as part of the federal cabinet. And we have asked the question, and as I go around the island doing my campaign, I'm asking everyone the question, can you tell us? What has been achieved in those 19 years? And can you compare those 19 years to our five? They have made the point that those who are offering themselves for the NRP are all of self and none of thee. I have made the point that they are all of self and none of thee, concerned as they are with benefiting themselves. And every institution that they have gone to, they have demonstrated the same character trait. To use that institution, to use that office for the benefit of themselves. <coughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I promised and have promised for some time the tale of the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College. It is an important tale, and I put on a jacket tonight, and I put on a little pocket square because I wanted to look like a lawyer. Because you see, tonight I want to prosecute a case. And I want the people of Nevis and the people of the wider federation, because CFBC is a public institution. I am not talking about what one does in one's chicken farm. I'm not talking about what one does in one's ice cream shop. I am talking about what one does in his or her public life. And so the tale of CFBC, I hope people are listening because it is a gory tale. It is a story which if it were made into a film would be a horror film. Now, let me set the background for this prosecution. In July of 2013, the press reported that one gentleman called Dr. Kelvin Daly was selected to become the president of the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College on St. Kitts. Now, I want you to bear with me. You know, when CCM speakers come to the platform, we do not ordinarily use a script. But I believe the script this evening is important for us to look at. He was in that position until 2015. We met him in that position when we entered into the federal government in February of 2015. And he continued there until his contract ended. As president of the CFBC, I hope you will agree with me that he was the head. As president, he was charged to oversee the day-to-day -day operations which fell to his purview as president. In other words, to use ordinary parlance so that every man, woman, and child can understand, he was the boss. He was in charge at CFBC. He was the leader at CFBC. Now, 
over the period 27th April 2015 to 29th October 2015, an internal audit was done of the finances at CFBC. The audit was conducted in accordance with the Finance Administration Act 2007 and the Policies and Procedures Manual of CFBC. Of note, listen carefully, of note is that the audit covered the period January 2012 to December 2014. That is important. Now here are the findings. Here where we get now. And just so you know, I have before me a copy of the audit report. And that audit report runs to some 40, some 44 pages. And then it has appendices with it. But I won't take it to all 44 pages because we will be here all night. So I will take you to the findings, the conclusions of the auditors having conducted an audit of the CFBC over the period January 12th, January, I'm sorry, 2012 to December 2014. Bear with me and listen carefully. The auditors found that the Policies and Procedures Manual of CFBC was not utilized by the staff. To explain that so, we are clear. CFBC had a manual that said what should happen, it did not happen. Number two, the activities of the cashier, you all know cashier dealing with cash. The activities of the cashier were not supervised leading to, and I quote, several errors and irregularities. Big words, things went wrong. Number three, some manual receipts were not posted to the accounting system QuickBooks. Neither was evidence found that monies collected were deposited to the CFBC bank account. Let me read that again, I want you to hear it. Some manual receipts were not posted to the accounting system QuickBooks. Neither was evidence found that monies collected were deposited to the CFBC bank account. In other words, money was collected. It was not deposited. Monies collected for which receipts were issued did not reconcile with the receipts totals. These are the findings, not my words, the words of the audit committee. Amounts collected were not deposited in full and for the period in which they were collected. Put differently, monies would come in and some would not be deposited. Deposits were made days, weeks and months after collection as a result, deposit totals did not reconcile with receipt totals. I go on. The auditors found, in some cases, listen carefully, in some cases there was no evidence to show that funds were deposited. For example, $38,071.54 on deposit summary for 31st January 2014. Can't be found. It goes on. Expenses paid from the credit card from the date of issue, which was July, August of 2013 to early December 2014, in the amount of $49,219.07, were not posted to QuickBooks until 16 January 2015. It goes on, and listen carefully, no invoices were found to support payments made for credit card transactions. I hope you all are listening, you know. No invoices were found to support payments made for credit card transactions. In other words, payments were made on the credit card, but the auditors don't know what the payments were for. It goes on. Duties were not properly separated 
to allow the duties of an employee to serve as checks on the duties of other employees. To put differently, it was a free for all. Everybody did what they wanted because there were no checks and balances put in place. Remember, I started out to say that the auditors found that the procedures manual for CFBC was not adhered to. Ignored. People at CFBC were doing what they felt like. There were no checks and balances. It resulted in a free for all in relation to monies being handled there. Now, at page 14 of the audit report, the auditors reported, and I quote, significant differences between the actual amounts on deposit slips with the amounts on the daily deposit summaries. On the daily deposit summaries, they found that there were significant differences. And this was contrary to the Finance Act. It was illegal. It was unlawful against the Finance Act. And hear what the auditors said. They say where, and I quote, this is not done, the risk exists that funds can be misappropriated. In the year 2014, it's an important year. In the year 2014, because we know in that year how the makeup of CFBC and the control of CFBC was constitutionally set up. How it was constituted, the year 2014 is an important year. It was the first full year that a certain gentleman was in charge. And during the year 2014, the auditor said, not me, CFBC collected 819,000. $276.01. Let me say it again. The figure so large, I am stuttering. In the year 2014, CFBC collected some $819,276.01, but, but, only $375,476.32 made it to the bank. I want this to sink in. I want this to sink in. This is what the auditors say, not me. I am reading from the auditors' report into the affairs of CFBC. Let me go back. The audit covered the period January 2012 to December 2014. And the auditors in their own words say that in the year 2014, CFBC collected $819,276.01. But only $375,000. $476.32 made it to the bank. During 2014, therefore, and I hope if you're home, you're sitting down. During 2014, therefore, some $443,799.69 went missing. The word that they use is poof. Poof. It doesn't end there. At page 21 of the audit report, it states that deposit summary dated 31st January 2014 shows that checks and cash were collected in the sum of 42,000. $271.54, but here it is. Only the check amount of 4200 was deposited. The remaining balance of $38,071.54 was not found. Poof. 
This ain't no small money we're talking about, you know. This is no small money we're talking about. The auditors say that in January 2014, checks and cash were collected in the sum of $42,271.54, but only the check amount of $4,200 was deposited. The remaining balance of $38,071.54 was not found. It gone missing. Poof. It doesn't end there, you know. The report continues at page 22 to set out that cash was used to make purchases, but, and I quote, there was no supporting documents to verify to whom payments were made or the authority given to make such payments. In other words, nobody knew who was paid or for what, but then we know the money was paid. Money gone, poof. Now let us look at the credit card. CFBC did not get a credit card until July, August of 2013. The dates are important. The credit card was issued then and used since that date. But the transactions were never entered in QuickBooks until the 15th of January 2015. Remember, Unity got into government in February of 2015. So it's just a couple of days before we got into government that the credit card transactions were eventually entered into the QuickBooks. Now here it is. So for all the time, a year and a half that the credit card expenditure was not reported. Some purchases were not accounted for and no supporting invoices could be found. The report found, I continue, remember I say I'm prosecuting a case. My Lord, honorable judges, listen to the case. The report found at page 27 and I quote, that a total of US $18,116.57 or EC $49,219.07 was expended for credit card transactions that did not have supporting documents to verify the purposes of the transactions. In other words, no one could tell what some $49,000 was spent on. When the expenditures are examined, we see money spent on flights and money spent at the St. Kitts Marriott Hotel. There was also, interestingly, money spent on psychological assessment. Psychological assessment. And there was quite a substantial amount of money spent on Amazon. So, the credit card was used at Marriott. It was used to pay for flights. It was used to buy whatever on Amazon. But there was no invoice. And so the auditors could not say to you or to me or to anyone else what the credit card transactions were for. Checking accounts. It doesn't end there. You see, I deal with cash, I deal with credit card, now I'm going to deal with check. At page 30 of the report, we have the startling observation that checks were sometimes signed, but no amount inserted, and no amount placed in the check stub so that amounts could not be reconciled. Let me now get to the conclusion, because I don't want you to be overburdened tonight. At the conclusion, the auditor said at page 42, during the period of review, and I quote, the CFBC was not operating according to best financial and accounting practices. It was also not complying with sections 50, 62, 1 and 2 of the Finance Administration Act and the guidelines set out in the Policies and Procedures Manual. Ladies and gentlemen, the tale of CFBC 
is a horror story. The tale of CFBC is a tale of hundreds of thousands of dollars gone missing. When I have made bold to say on this platform that money went missing on a daily basis, many laughed because you didn't have the facts. Well, I've given you the facts tonight. And you realize that throughout the period on the review, monies went missing daily. Monies went missing weekly. Monies went missing monthly. Monies went missing annually. But monies went missing poof. It was a daily occurrence at CFBC that monies went missing. And I want you to note that. Now, this thing is interesting, you know. I am a lawyer of long standing. Since I've been in politics, well, maybe I don't remember all the law. But when I practiced law, I was no papisho lawyer, and I was a serious lawyer. And so I find it interesting that sometimes what people do, when they don't want a topic discussed, they don't want to be asked questions on a topic, you know what they do? They sue somebody. And whenever they ask, they get the response. It is before the court. Well, this is a court of public opinion. Because politics is done in the court of public opinion. And the people of Nevis have to make a choice. And on this stage, in this election, we keep telling you that the choice is clear. Because the choice has to be to choose people who between all of us can hold their hands and heads high and say before God and man, our hands are clean. We voted for CCM again. CCM go keep it up, keep it up, up, up. Just keep it up, 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 up. Keep it up, CCM keep up the moment up. So what has happened? Sean Richards, the Deputy Prime Minister and Leader of PAM. And Vance Winkworth Amory, a decent man who is our senior minister in the unity administration and former leader of this great party and former premier. They had a town hall and they said certain things which were factual. And let me tell you something, and I want to say it clear tonight. If it is that you stole money and I say you thief money, you can't sue me, you know, because you stole money. It is a factual statement. And the law of defamation is clear. That truth is a complete defense to any defamation action. I want that to sink in. If a man walking down the street, that is why you know over the years on the platform I have said and said again. If I am in any crowd, anywhere in the world, and a man ball out thief, me not look at me not thief from nobody. I have always said that, but some, you see, when the call goes out, thief, them look up and say, not me. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Richards and Van Samory were at a town hall meeting. And in response to accusations that they had victimized a certain individual, when his contract came to an end and was not renewed, they pointed out the findings of the audit report. And they made a case and pointed to the fact that for some period that was reviewed in the audit report, that a certain gentleman was in charge, was the boss, was the hell hefe, was the president the boss man in charge of CFBC. Now what is wrong with that? The facts are there. Now if I say I was the Premier of Davis from December 2017 until now, and you say, Mr. Brantley, while you were Premier, 
Some money went missing from the treasury. That falls under you. Let me ask you something. What is in that to sue for? It is a fact. The audit report covers a period from 2012 until 2014. Let me confirm, you know, because I want to be precise. January 2012 to December 2014. So these two gentlemen simply pointed out who was in charge of CFBC from the middle of the abouts of 2013 until 2015. And we know, Google it. The same way them Google to get planned for BART. Google it. And you will see who was in charge. And whilst, whilst they were in charge, the report came to the conclusions that it came to that I have articulated earlier, that I have read into the record in this honorable court, and read into the record accurately, not in my words, but in the words of the audit report, what happened. Unless you forget, let me remind you, that the audit report says that for the year 2014, an important year, for the year 2014, an important year, that a total figure so extensive, CFBC collected, if you have pen and paper, write it down. 819,276 dollars and one cent, but only 375,476 dollars and 32 cents made it to the bank. During 2014, therefore, some 443,000 dollars, 799 and 69 cents went missing. Somewhere between CFBC and National Bank, $443,799.69 fell off the truck. <laughs> fell off the truck. Oh, and the question God. is, where did it fall to? That is a legitimate question to ask. Where did the money fall to? Oh my God! Was, was that money used for roofing material? Was that money used for fish pot wire? In Bad Village, which was given to a man to sell? And when they come back for the money, the man say what? Somebody thief the money. I am asking this question because the public has a right to know. But what is more interesting, you know, that while all of this was going on as outlined in the audit report, hear what? CFBC owed hundreds of thousands of dollars to Skellig not paying the electricity. CFBC owed hundreds of thousands of dollars to Social Security. Staff salaries were deducted, not paid to Social Security. CFBC owed hundreds of thousands of dollars to CXC. Collect people money for exams, not paid over to CXC. So you ask yourself, Skelec not paid. Social Security not paid, CXC not paid, and 443,000 gone, poof. Oh my God! Ask yourself. So, what people have tried to do, you see, they run to the courthouse. And uh, they file a frivolous lawsuit. Say people are defaming them. You can defame somebody for telling the truth. 
If I say that we are here at campaign headquarters tonight, you can't sue me. I have not said anything wrong. I have spoken the truth. The auditors spoke to what they found and what they didn't find. And a whole heap of money they couldn't find. And they said what they had to say. So they bring a lawsuit. And sometimes when I'm driving and my radio station in the car goes on to one of these noise makers. And I hear the question being asked, the response comes back. The matter is before the court, we can't discuss it. The matter is before the court, we can't discuss it. Because they expect that that will be an excuse for the people of Nevis not to know and see that when they were in charge of an institution, this is what happened. Now, I am here to say that if as the Premier of Nevis, any money go missing in any department, in any ministry, the public has every right to say of me, Mr. Premier, what happened to the people's money. That is what the responsibility of leadership is all about. If you are in charge of TDC and money go missing, they're going to ask the man in charge of TDC what happened to TDC money. But some are going around and don't want nobody to ask them what happened to CFBC money. And we now talk about half penny, you know, or halfpenny, as we used to say. Come on, time again. We are talking about hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Gone poof. Oh my God. Ladies and gentlemen, I have promised to prosecute this particular case because when you hear some of the sanctimonious vagabonds on the radio pontificating, saying all man of evil against Eric, saying all man of evil against Alexis and Lord poor me. Vicky one child them cost me in morning, noon and night. Some one of them say that they have a particular fella. And when his wife, in the wee hours of the morning, touched the back of his neck, he bawled out, Mark Brantley. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> when I got the story, I will admit I was afraid. I became afraid, and ever since then, I've watched this fella cross eye. Because if your wife touched you in the middle of the night and you could only say, Mark Brantley, I have a difficulty with that. But that is what they have been doing, preoccupied with those of us in the CCM, making up all kinds of stories about us when the files are here. You know, I don't know. Whether or not the people could see the light. But I put a green marker on the file. It says CFBC file. It is set out in green because I want to remind myself every day when I go into my grip and I read that this is the legacy of those in the Nevis Reformation Party. This is the legacy of the leadership of this so-called new NRP, all of self and none of thee. And look at them, whether you put them at London Housing, whether you put them at CFBC, whether you put them at the legal department, whether you put them at agriculture, whether you put them in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, wherever you put them, the story is the same. The story is the same, ladies and gentlemen. And that is why I feel so proud of the team that CCM has brought to you. I feel proud of the team that CCM has brought to you because there is no file on us. There is no file on us. And that is why I can stand up here proud and say that before God and man, our hands are clean. Time again.
All the things they say about us, all the stories that they fabricate, they try to make up all kinds of things. It reminds me, they say, of somebody who have what we used to call Bigfoot in the old days. Some of the young people may not understand. But they say they're coming down the road, and before the other person could talk about their Bigfoot, they point out quick that the other person got a big foot too. There's a situation where those who talk the most in this country, those who criticize the most in this country, when you examine them, they have no character. They have no character. And when I look at them gathering up, Doing all manner of things because they want to get yet another chance to rape and pillage our treasury. I say to you, the people of Nevis, that we have presented enough evidence. So that you and I and the people of Nevis could say, not you. Never again will we have an NRP administration that only cares about itself and not about the people of the country. We have pointed out, we have pointed out about Patrice Nisbet that instead of trying to help the people of number 11 who have stuck with him for 20 long years, his only focus was to give his sidekick Hector a job. And then when Hector got the job and he and Hector were sitting down there in the office drinking, no doubt, some alcoholic beverage. They came to the conclusion that West Bass there was a beautiful place. Let us get some land there. And when I heard Senator Keelan Nisbet say that there are families in West Bass there of 10 people in one house, none of them could get a piece of land. But Patrice and Hector get land in West Bass there. I felt it. Because it is those 10 people in that house that we, as elected persons, as parliamentarians, as politicians, should be looking out for. But they were not interested in that. They wanted to get for them, for their families. And I ask myself all the time, that Hector gets so much land and house in Nevis. His family gets so much land and house in Nevis. You mean... That even to sink it, he went go look. And as somebody pointed out, if we were still the Trinity of Islands and Anguilla was there, then I'm sure you'd have gone to Island Harbor or the valley to get some down there too. I have made bold to say that Hector's lead of NRP, if they ever suck government in this country again, he will start to survey the seawater. This is how you call land grabbers. Thinking about themselves. Well, what about you? What about the people of this great island and country? Man, I want to hear that people over in St. Thomas's get land. If it was that you went sink it and Nevis people got land in West Bastia, I will say, well, that is fine because they're citizens too. But you go in there and you're in a position of power and privilege and you use that power and privilege for you. For you. I wonder where the money came from to pay for those lands. Did they come from all the attorneys? Where the monies came from to pay for those lands? These ladies and gentlemen are questions we must ask people, you know. Because they're coming around, they're coming around. Somebody told me today that Hensley Daniel, who I thought I had retired from politics, that he up and down, up and down, walking up and down, telling people, boy, I have voted daily, boy, I have voted daily. And somebody said to me, if he could not convince people to vote for him, 
How will he convince the people of St. John's and the people of number nine to vote for a man they don't know? And I'm looking on, amused and bemused, at what they're offering the people of Nevis. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I engage everybody as I campaign. I don't pick out. I talk to those I think are supporters. I talk to those that I believe do not support. And I believe that you too must do the same. We have an army of bloggers online. Don't cuss anybody. Talk to everybody. But more and more, what I'm hearing from the NRP supporters is when you lay out the facts, they say, oh, I you like a cuss people. Well, if I say money went missing at CFBC, that's a fact. That is not costing anybody. And if I say it was a daily occurrence, it was a fact because monies went missing daily. I am not costing anybody. I am setting out the facts and I'm saying that there are some hard questions to be asked and answers demanded. And rushing to the court to try and muzzle the public so that you have a stock response every time the questions are asked. The matter before the court, me can't talk about it. I am saying that that is unacceptable. That's why I like U.S. politics, you know. They go back to when your great, 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 great grandfather was born. And they come forward because they want to ensure that the people who are putting themselves forward to lead, you know what it is to ask somebody to put their trust and confidence in you? To tell them to give you a vote so that you can represent them? That trust and confidence is invaluable. And so ladies and gentlemen, when they come ask them the hard questions, what happened at CFBC? Why was Social Security money not paid? Why was Skellig not paid? Why the children and the poor families in the country paid for their CXCs, but CXC never got the money? Now listen carefully, you know. Money between CFBC and the bank fell off the truck. Money between CFBC and CXC in Barbados fell off the plane. Money was falling everywhere. And that is why I say that we in the CCM ought to be proud of the team. We not bring no jokey people to you. We not bring no, no PR, PR, PR people to you. We bring serious people. And even though Eric Evelyn comes up here and he dances, you know why he dances? Because he knows how to dance. The man gone dances, we're all into Church Street. And on the 6th of June, the 6th of June next week, Saturday, we will be partying on the streets of Charlestown and on the streets of Bastyr because the Concerned Citizens Movement will be back in government. Hammer time again. Run to the and vote for CCM. CCM ready and fit for the election. Hammer time again. Run to the polls and vote for CCM. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I promised myself tonight that I will try not to be overly long. But you see, I came tonight to prosecute a particular case. You are the judge and jury. You are the ones who will have to pass sentence on the 5th of June. You are the ones who will have to determine... Whether what you have heard and what you now know, you want persons of that character to represent you. You are the ones who must ask yourself the question, can this individual be trusted? Can they be trusted to be put in positions of authority and to make decisions that will benefit you and not themselves? And the record is clear. The evidence is pellucid. Honorable Judge, Learned Judge, my Lord, I rest my case in relation to CFBC. I believe that the case that I have led 
the prosecution that I have mounted this evening, the evidence is clear. That the only verdict that can be returned is guilty, is guilty, is guilty. And that, my Lord, I am asking you to give the maximum sentence that you can give for this level of misfeasance and malfeasance. That the maximum sentence that you can give is on the 5th of June. You ensure that the NRP candidates get the licking of a lifetime. Sentence them. Sentence them. Sentence them, my Lord, to lashes in the public square. Let them go there. And I believe that an appropriate sentence in the circumstances, my Lord, will be to lash them 443,000. 799 times and add 0.69 of a lash for good measure. Bend them over in the square and lash them for every dollar that went missing from CFBC. That is what we must do because the level the level of skullduggery, the level of badness in high and low places that the NRP has engaged in over the years. The people of Nevis must ban them, shun them, and tell them that they will never again see public office in this country. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this afternoon and this evening, I have been going around and campaigning. Sometimes night catches me. And as I'm speaking to persons sympathetic, some of them to the NRP, they are saying to me, we don't want to hear nothing about history. We want to hear about your plans for the future. And I said, you can't have plans if you don't have a foundation. You can't go forward with people whose history is such that you can't trust them. We must talk about these things because the electorate must be informed. And they must know who they are voting for and what they are voting for. And I have spent time night after night on this platform to say, compare us, compare our record. And when you do that, when you compare us and you compare our record, you will understand that in this election there's only one choice, and that is the Concerned Citizens Movement. So ladies and gentlemen, on the 5th of June, we are asking you to vote for the record of the CCM. We are asking you to look at the fact that Eric Evelyn, as a newcomer to politics, is already transforming culture and social development in this country. Look at the fact that even though he's not yet a federal minister, he's already been chosen to represent and lead federal delegations as he did to carry Festa in Trinidad. Look at the fact that Alexis Jeffers Although he's not yet in the federal cabinet, has gone time and time again as a federal representative and minister of agriculture to international organizations. I recall that Alexis recently went to Indonesia on behalf of the country. He has traveled because in Alexis, everybody sees, we know, and think it's also now sees, that he is a leader among leaders. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we are, the three of us, one of the best teams that has been assembled. I say, look at us, examine us. Our hands and hearts, look at us, examine us. And if you can't find any files on us, there's no file anywhere with blue ink that says Eric Evelyn. No file anywhere with blue ink. That says Alexis Jeffers. No file anywhere with blue ink, red ink, white ink, or any kind of ink that says Mark Brantley. 
because our lives have been done and led in a particular way. And when we came to public life, we did not come for us. We came to serve you. And that is a fundamental difference in mentality to those around this Nevis Reformation Party. So, I am asking you on the 5th to go out in your numbers. I am asking you to go out early o'clock because I don't want to stay up too late. At my age now, I need my rest. And so what I want you to do for me is to go out early and I want to get the call. I want the call to come. The call to come from the poll clerks. I want to be able to call Alexis and call Eric. And when I ask them how are things going, Alexis over there, number 11, by 2 o'clock I wanted to say, I will be the new representative for the people of St. Thomas's and St. James. When I call my brother Eric in Gingerland, and I say, Eric, how are things going? I want him to say, Gingerland remains with the Concerned Citizens Movement. And when I call my poll clerks and poll watchers and the army of people that helps us in number nine, the good people of St. Paul's and St. John's, and I ask how are things going, I want by two o'clock for you to tell me that number nine remains with Mark A.G. Brantley. That number nine has been since 2007 and remains now Sheriff Country. I want it done early. And so I want you to go to the polls early in your numbers and do what you have to do. Vote for progress. Vote for the team that has demonstrated that it is all about you and not about us. Vote for the Concerned Citizens Movement. Send us to Bastia. Allow us to continue that rich tradition of representation that we have provided to you. The people of Nevis, you are safe with CCM. You are safe with CCM. You understand that in CCM, you have a party. That throughout the life of this party has said that our people matter most. And when we say that we want you to keep the momentum... We want you to keep the momentum. Ask King Astro is now telling us to run. You hear him saying, walking out, run and run vote for CCM. You hear that? We want it over early. When you have done what you have needed to do early, you go home and relax. And I want you to stay in good touch with our candidates. Let them know what is going on on the ground because there's a lot of trickery and treachery that is planned in this election. There's a lot of people going around claiming they have money and they're offering people all manner of things. I'm saying, do not hurt your head with that. Let us continue to be focused and vigilant. Let us stay to the issues at hand. Let us continue to speak of the bad characters on the other side. And let us continue to extol the virtues of this great CCM party and the candidates that it has offered. Let us continue to do the work, ladies and gentlemen. I keep saying that in Eric Evelyn, Alexis Jeffers and myself, you have three men who are old enough to know but still young enough to do. We still have the energy to work on your behalf. Not for eight hours a day, as some have been suggesting, but for 24 hours a day. For seven days a week, because our work is never done. There is work to be done in Bastyr, and I'm asking you to send the best team on offer to do that work. This is not a time for you to be feeling sorry for somebody. That is not your job. Those who require... That level of assistance, those who are offering themselves as politicians and who require you to feel sorry, tell them that that is the job of the Salvation Army. That is not your job. Your job is to elect competent people. Your job is to elect the right people to represent you. And our record is there. 
I have compared the 19 years of NRP at the federal table in St. Kitts. And I've compared that to the five short years of CCM at the federal table in St. Kitts. And oh my, what a difference. Today I spoke to some individuals as I sought to make the case for them to vote for the CCM. One of them said to me that Patrice had delivered. And I said to him, tell me one or two things that you think he delivered in 19 years, 20 years, I'm sorry, at the federal level, and five of those years in government. And remember, Patrice was not just in government, you know. When Sam Conder and Tim Harris left the Douglas administration, Patrice was the linchpin. Patrice had all the power in his hands. And with all that power, as the linchpin propping up a man in Bastyr, Patrice never asked for a thing for Nevis. So when I ask the youngster, young man, what would you say he has accomplished? He thought long and hard, and then he said he brought some computers to Nevis. And I said to him, if in 20 years as a representative, that the only thing you can point to is that he brought some computers to Nevis, then you are making the case for me. Oh, my God! That there has been no representation for the people of number 11 in the past 20 years. And that is why I am saying to you, the good people of St. Thomas's and St. James, that your time is now, and the time is now for you to elect the Honorable Alexis Jeffers. Send Zook to work. We voted for CC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send Zook to work. Because when he rolls up his sleeves and he starts to work, you know, they have called Alexis all kind of names. And one day he came to me because I like to check with him and ask, man, how you feeling? How you bearing up under the pressure? And he said, boy, them call me a bulldozer. He said, the latest name is Bulldozer. And I started to feel bad for Alexis. Alexis said, I like the name. I like the name because you use Bulldozer to clear things to build. If you go over by the dump right now, a bulldozer over there, Clearing rubbish. You use bulldozer to get obstacles out of the way and get things done. So he man say he liked the name because Alexis is a hard worker. Send the man to Bass there to do the work. Laziness is an abomination to the Lord. And Alexis is a hard worker. We have established he's an honest man. If you have a man who's honest, a man who's hardworking, and a man who loves his country, and he demonstrated his love of this country when he gave up his U.S. passport, I can't stop talking about it, because many of us would never do it. And the man gave them his U.S. passport, and he said, my lot is with the people of St. James. My lot is with the people of St. Thomas's. My lot is with the people of Nevis. I want to serve. And if it means that I must give up this passport to serve, then that is what I shall do. Many of us, ladies and gentlemen, do not take heed, pay heed, and give credit where credit is due. But ask yourself, how many of us would have done that? Given up their U.S. passport so that they could serve. Not no court make them do it, you know. Nobody asked him to do it. By the Alexis time I asked Jeffrey. him where it was, Alexis had already made his arrangements to have it done. Alexis Jeffries. That's why the people of number 11 know that in Alexis they have a man they can trust, a man who works hard, and a man who loves his country. And those are the ingredients of a good leader. Those are the ingredients. Eric Evelyn, what can you say about Eric? The NRP has launched the most ridiculous of campaigns. 
The only thing that the NRP has succeeded at yet in politics is failure. They have failed election after election. Since 19, 1992, the NRP has only managed one election victory in 2006. And we all know how that victory came about. In 2011, they tried again. You see, when I set out the factional, and I tell you that this NRP lacks character. You lose election after election in 2006, you finally teeth one. You get in, rather than using the opportunity now that you're in to demonstrate that you're all for the people, you take off hundreds of our people's name from the voters list in order to stay in office. You think oh it'll be easy? My God. I see them up and down now. Say they have Spanish people, people from the Dominican Republic, mi hermanos and hermanas. They say they have them with the NRP. They say they have people from Guyana now, our brothers and sisters who have made Nevis their home. They say Guyanese are with NRP. And I can only reflect as I go out in my house to house and say, to the non-national community that under NRP you were rounded up. You were rounded up. They kicked in your door in the dead of night. I remember one woman said to me that at three o'clock in the morning they kicked on her door. She was naked in her bed. Sleeping, they kicked on her door. Say she don't have no work permit, she must get out of the country. I recall very well that a husband and wife from the Dominican Republic, a husband and wife from the Dominican Republic, I believe that they were from a place called La Romana. And you know what happened? The NRP went because the fella they say, was supportive of me and the CCM. And they went, and they locked up the people, you know. And I remember when I went to the police station, the lady had a newborn, division born baby in her arms. And then Happy said, tomorrow they're being sent back to La Romana. Why? Because they said they were supportive of the CCM. And I had to go to court and fight. And you know, when I fight in court, I tend to win. And so that family was rescued from the clutches of the NRP. The NRP did only do that, you know. When they picked up people, our Guyanese brothers and sisters, our Jamaican brothers and sisters, our people from... Dominican Republic and deported them. You know what they did? They put a notation in the immigration system, flagging the people as criminals and terrorists yeah, 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 yeah. so that the people could not come back into the country as foreign minister. There are so many I have had to help because they call and say they have their relatives here. They want to come and visit from Guyana. And they can't come because every time their name goes into the system, it pops up that they are criminals, terrorists, threats to our country. And as a consequence, when I inquired of national security, why is this so? They said, well, when NRP was there, they used to flag the people to make sure that not only are they being deported, but they can't come back. So when I hear them say, that the good people of Dominican Republic and the good people of Guyana and Jamaica are now with them. I ask myself, is it that they think people's memory so short? Is it that they think people forget when they used to be rounded up? I recall being in town. And in town there used to be the place they call Longstone House. And there used to be a wall there. And my Guyanese brother had a bar in the back. 
And people used to be sitting on the wall on a Friday afternoon, cooling out and having a drink. And the police van used to come up. I don't know where they get the van. I don't know if they used to borrow agriculture van. But they had a van. And they just pick up the people, pick them up, round them up. Take them up. Sometimes they use a school bus. That is the legacy of NRP. So when I hear them talk about, oh, non-nationals are now with us, I ask, which non-nationals? Which ones? Because people can't have such short memories. See what NRP has done here in this country, you see? If they feel that you are in a vision and you don't support them, they victimize you. They went so far as to ensure that they removed your names from the voters' list so you could not exercise your franchise. They object. A fella tell me from St. John's that he got a girlfriend at one point in St. James. He said he only go over there twice. He don't know who was hiding in the bush. But the next thing he know, he get an objection. Say he live in St. James. They are bent on disenfranchising our people. And then when that was not enough for the national community that they felt was supportive of CCM, they deport them. But you know, that's not all, you know. They had a racket being run here in this country. I want no national to listen to me, you know. Because perhaps some of them need to be reminded that the only way you used to get a work permit, you had to go and pay some of the NRP agents, some of the sanctimonious vagabonds, they were not in the government, but they were around the government. And they charged poor people $1,500 and $2,000. Because only through them could these people get a work permit. So when you don't pay them, and the permit comes out, you have to now go and pay for the permit. That's how people used to be treated. Guyanese in Brown Hill, you also have their passport being held. And when they work, they don't get no pay and they can't make no noise. All of those things the CCM has brought to an end. The CCM has said that if you're here, you're making your contribution, then we welcome you just as the people of Nevis have made their contribution in St. Martin and Tortola and St. Thomas and St. Croix and New York City and Florida and London and Birmingham. You come here to make your contribution. Once you abide by our law, you are welcome. Run to the polls and vote for CCM. Let me go. CCM ready and fit for the election. This CCM cares about people. Brothers and sisters, we care about people. And that is why we have one election after election because people recognize that we care. You have to care if you're going to give up your salary, you know. Who in their right mind gives up salary? Think about it. You have to care if in addition to giving up your salary, you put your hands in your pocket and you provide food for the most vulnerable. 13,500 EC dollars, 5,000 US a month. And I thank Eric Rilvillian and I thank Alexis Jeffers, and I thank the other members of CCM. And when the executives saw what we were doing as ministers, they said, no, we too are going to chip in something. People have been inspired, and that is what you must do as a leader, inspire people to do better, inspire people to be their best selves, not to thief, 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 thief. That cannot inspire anybody, except it's criminals you want to inspire. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what this party is about. I feel so proud to be a member of the Concerned Citizens Movement. I feel so proud to wear my blue and wear my colors and stand up because when I stand up and I think of Vance Wincourt Amory, a man whose propriety and rectitude is unquestionable. When I stand up and I think of Malcolm Gishard, when I think of Nurse Jean Harris, what you could say about Jean? Except that she loved people and she served people. Colin Tyrrell, 
Kitty Herbert, run through the list, Michael Perkins. What could you say except that they are honest people, clean people, decent people? That is why when Mark Brantley had the choice, because as much as NRP people cost me, Parry asked me before he asked Hensley. When I had the choice, I chose the Concerned Citizens Movement because of their record of achievement and because of their decency. And I've never looked back and never regretted it. And I want the people of our beloved island to understand that it is love of people, love of people that has inspired this party, that has encouraged us to continue, not love of ourselves. That is why they can't find nothing on us. Alexis has made it bold to say that for seven years he has been minister of lands in Nevis. He has not got one square inch of Nevis land. Not one square inch of government land. Whatever land he has acquired, he has done so privately. That is a man with clean hands. The other night, when we made the point that Alexis Jeffers, as minister of lands, insisted in the cabinet and got a cabinet decision that no cabinet member could buy any government land or benefit from any government land. Somebody from Sink has contacted me and said, Mr. Brantley, you all need to emphasize that point. Because only a decent government and decent people in government would make those decisions. And for seven years, no member of the CCM government has been able to get even one square inch of government-owned land. That is our record. And so for me, this election and the contest that is now up foot, the question that is now up foot, who do you choose? And I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the choice has to be clear. Our record in five years of accomplishments is stellar. Last night I stood here and I went through a laundry list and I kept saying, CCM do that. CCM do that. CCM do that. You would think we have been there for 30, 40 years in terms of what we've done. And we continue to perform and perform and perform because that is the nature of CCM. That is the DNA of CCM. CCM is the party that has rescued Nevis, that is promoting Nevis, that is developing Nevis. CCM is the only party that puts the people of Nevis first. And when I go down to Bastyr on the 6th, it will be a Saturday. I want to go down with all of you. But I want to walk. I'm not even... I don't want to go from the reggae beach, you know. I want to go into town. I want the boat to dock in town. Because when the army of blue walk up Church Street, when Alexis is walking, and Eric is walking shoulder to shoulder with me, walking up Church Street, I want the message to be clear that we come and we mean business on behalf of the people of Nevis. The best team, ladies and gentlemen, to represent us. And so in Gingerland, the Honorable Eric Evelyn is running. I don't even know who he's running about. Nobody. I have no idea who he's running against. So he's running in Gingerland. And I'm asking the people of Gingerland to stay with the Concerned Citizens Movement and make your mark for Eric. Over there in number 11, I am asking the people of St. James and St. Thomas's to create history and send the Honorable Alexis Jeffers to Bastia to work for you. And in the great, great constituency of Nevis 9, the people of St. John's and St. Paul's, I Mark Anthony Graham Brantley respectfully and humbly asks for your support in this election to continue the good work that we started way back in 2007. Early out and make your mark. Early out 
and keep them out. Make your mark for Alexis Jeffers in number 11, for Eric Evil in number 10, for Mark Brantley in number 9. Make your mark. Ladies and gentlemen, the hour has grown late. I hope I've given you enough to think about in terms of the record, a topic I will come back to time and time again. I hope you'll give us the opportunity to continue the momentum that we have built. And that the beautiful people of this beloved island of ours will continue to have decent, sober, sensible leadership to take us forever forward and upwards. I'm asking you as we leave this place this evening to ensure that you talk to your friends and neighbors, to ensure that they go out and vote on June 5th, to take them out if you need to, take them to the polls, transport them, ensure, ladies and gentlemen, that our people go out in their numbers and vote on Friday the 5th of June. Today is Saturday, and the question therefore for us is how will we celebrate next Saturday? How will we celebrate next Saturday? So I'm asking the police from now, Lord, I'm going to have to free up the thing, because next Saturday, Lord, I'm going to have to give us a little space. CCM has been so good. As a decent party, we have been so good. We have adhered to everything you've said, but police, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Brandy, if you can hear me, on Saturday you must free up the thing because CCM want to motorcade on Saturday. We want to enjoy ourselves on Saturday. We want to blow up the place on Saturday because I'm telling you, this is our time. This is Alexis time. This is Eric time. This is Mark time. This is Hammer time. Good night. God bless you. And we'll see you next week.